and welcome back to Harry's Jetty channel. In this video we're going to look at the sounds and controlling the sounds of the system. Uh, you can assign uh, files to moving the switches or knobs, uh, you can make the knobs beep and read out percentages and you can assign sound files to warnings or um, various telemetry things from your model. Uh, well, the DS16 that I have only takes .wav type of files, so it can't take MP3s, MP4s. Uh, I, I'm not sure. I have a feeling that some of the later transmitters, maybe the 24, maybe the new 12, can take MP4s, but I don't know. Check in your own instruction manual for that. But the principles of how you program all this stuff and get it will be the same. Now, in the early days, there is a great temptation to uh, assign uh, some sort of voice output to every switch that you're going to operate. And it, it that sounds great when you're in the workshop, but when you're out at the model flying field and there's other pilots standing around you, they quickly get pissed off at all the noise coming from your transmitter every time you move a switch. And frankly, do you need to know that you've put the wheels down? from the transmitter, because you can see you've put the wheels down. Um, so it's better to restrict it to things that you really need to know has operated or uh, would cause you a problem if you flick the wrong switch. For instance, um, let's say this switch here is your rate switch and this switch here is your gyro on off switch. You're flying the model, you go to flick your rate switch, but you accidentally flick the gyro switch. It'd be nice if the transmitter said, gyro off. And you think, oh heck, I've, I've put the wrong one, move that back. And it says gyro on. So at least you know your gyro is back on and you can fiddle around to try and find the other switch. So uh, you can also have a bit of fun with them, but again, don't do so much that the people around you start getting a bit annoyed at all the noise. Uh, let's have a think of some of the fun things you can do, as well as um, making straightforward um, files which are just speaking out text. Uh, if you go on the internet, you can find .wav files for all sorts of fun things. Um, I've downloaded a couple of the obvious ones for model jet flyers. Um, or ducted fans. Let's say you've bought your free wing F-14. You've got it all programmed superbly in your jetty. You're flying it around and you want to make a nice low fast flyby. You sweep the wings back and... Tower, this is Ghost Rider requesting a flyby. Negative Ghost Rider, the pattern is full. Yeah, a bit of fun. But I say, uh, do it more than a couple of times and people around you start to get a bit cheesed off with it. Another fun one would be, um, in my jet models, uh, I tend to fly on a flight timer, but I have one of the jetty little MUI sensors, which is wired for the current into the fuel pump, and it measures the milliamp hours, and by you know calibrating it, uh, in other words, looking at the fuel tank and the milliamp hours consumed after I've landed, I've set an alarm at a particular number of milliamp hours consumed. If I've managed to forget to start the timer or have been flying particularly wide open throttle the whole time, when it reaches a certain milliamp hours, which corresponds to the tanks being pretty low, uh, the transmitter says to me, you know, low fuel, land now. But you could have a bit more fun. Instead, you could assign this sound file to it. Land this thing. We are way low on gas. You understand me? Yeah, okay. All just a little bit of fun. Ghost Rider requesting a flyby. Uh, be quiet. Um, so how do you go about doing these things? Right. First one, we'll assign sounds to switches. So we go into menu, into advanced properties, sounds on event. And there you go. There you can see the two events I've set up on Switch SE, the sound files. Uh, we'll delete those out for the moment. So you simply add, choose the switch you want. I shall move this switch to its mid position. Say OK. And let's say I'm after a um, war, I've moved the rate switch. Keep coming down until I find their various rates. 
Um, you will find there are files that already come loaded in your Jetty Radio, but you'll want to make more for yourselves, custom stuff, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Uh, for instance, I might want uh, that the mids position is rates medium, and I will add Say OK. Now that one can be rate slow. I can add one more. OK to that. And it will be I know you're on the edge of your seat about this. It's going to be, yes, you guessed it, rates high. By the way, if you're not sure what's going to happen with this file, just press the play button. I'll turn the volume up. It would help. Rates are high. Sorry about that. I have my volume on a side slider, as you can see. At the top right-hand bar, I can turn the volume up and down. So... Say OK to that, and there we are. If I turn the volume on and move the switch. Rates are medium. Rates are low. Rates are medium. Rates are high. Uh, and uh, if you have like separate aileron and elevator and rudder rate switches, you don't have to accept that. Uh, you can do as I've done and make individual aileron rates are high, aileron rates are low, elevator rates are high, elevator rates are medium, this kind of thing, and assign it so you can tell it. But as I say, the temptation is to do far too much of these initially, and then the novelty wears off and you settle down to the ones that really need to be done uh, as more as safety issues. Uh, so we'll say, come out of here for the moment and look at sounds of proportional controls. What the dickens is that? I'll just go and take a look. Control. Move the one we want. Uh, let's say it's knob P8, which is just a little bit down here. Can the camera see it? Doesn't matter. There we are, P8. Move the desired control. There we go. Say OK. Now, what sort of sound do we want? There are three options here. There's none. Center beep. Choose center beep. Now, it will make a little beep when we hit center. There we go. Turn the volume up just in case you're not hearing it. Why might you want that? Well, suppose you have a, a gyro where center is off, anti-clockwise is heading mode, clockwise is um, rate mode. It's nice to have a little beep for it to tell you that you're back at the center point. And the other option is voice. Now in this, you can rotate the knob and when you stop, the voice will tell you what percentage you're at. Rather handy. Try this. Minus 40%. I'll turn the volume down a little. That might have overwhelmed it. 49%. Zero percent. Oh, there we go. How nice. So I'll just switch that off for the moment. Clear that out. OK. And the other kinds of noise. In timer sensors, this is where you would set alarms. Um, so you could set, for instance, in my electric models, I have one of the MUI sensors on the main drive battery. It reads volts, current, and milliamp hours consumed. And I will set one of these so that after a certain number of milliamp hours have been consumed, it speaks the warning to me uh, that, you know, 75% of your battery's consumed, land now. You can set other warnings to do with low voltages, currents consumed, um, speeds, altitudes, whatever. The, it defaults to doing this one, Voltage RX. By the way, Morse code alarms, I suggest you leave those disabled. Do not enable them. Uh, otherwise, the alarm you get from things like your receiver, 
or sensors when they decide that they're at low voltage or whatever is various beeps as Morse code from the transmitter. And you'll wonder, what is that beeping and can I interpret it and what's going on? Um, it's really a hang back to the days of um, when you'd, you'd fix a jetty module into the back of your uh, other brand transmitter, which of course it couldn't speak to you because there was no none of that sort of communication between the module and the transmitter and the transmitter didn't have the software. Uh, so just leave Morse code alarm switched off. The system tends to default to creating this one. Let's have a look at it. <clears throat> it's sensor, the voltage RX, because you don't have to fit a sensor, the receivers just do this. It's enabled. The condition, at 4.5 volts, it will say low U, in other words, low voltage. Do you want it to announce the, the existing values, its current value, which gets a bit confusing with electricity? Do you want to announce that existing value by voice? You don't really. If it's told you the voltage is low, you know to do something about it, like land. Um, you don't need to know just where the voltage is. Set throttle to idle, not necessarily a good idea. And uh, I know Futabas used to do this, I think, if uh, the voltage got low. There, there could be a point to it, so it's up to you to choose it. Snag with this is... Warning. Low voltage. Okay. Well, in every model you're flying, at least two batteries are involved. The transmitter and something's powering the receiver. So which of the two was it? If it's in my jet models, there are four batteries involved because I have two independent batteries running the receiver system. I have a turbine battery, and of course you've got the transmitter battery. Uh, so you hear low battery volt or low voltage in flight, and you think, oh my goodness, better land now before something happens, get it down. Think, well, which of the four was it? You're going to have to go off and do some investigating if it's not immediately obvious. And it may not be immediately obvious when you're on the ground, because, uh, you know, uh, if you're not hauling current, some um, battery voltages could have recovered. And it could take some investigation. So why not get it to tell you which one it is? Just go into it. There's the one that's set. And again, you, you might find some others came with your jetty. If not, make the ones you want. There, I could have, if the warning came for the receiver, that's the one I'd want. Listen. Warning. Low receiver voltage. Yay! That tells me a lot more than just low voltage. Uh, you can set one for low transmitter voltage for your warning there. Warning. Transmitter low battery. Lovely. And uh, I have ones, other ones that say warning low turbine battery. So I know my, my jet engine battery is running low. Um, I have... Warning low voltage battery one and warning low voltage battery two, where I have two independent batteries plugged into a jetty central box uh, because each of them is independently monitored. So, uh, you know, so if I get a low voltage warning in flight, the system has actually told me which battery is giving me the warning. So there we go. That is the three main versions of sounds. Let's go into one more. And that's system, system sound. Now these are sort of ready-made warnings. Um, you can have a look through them, receiver bound. You know the noise it makes when you plug your receiver in and uh, the, the two of them talk to one another and the system does that to you. Uh, there is the low transmitter voltage warning. As it's, it's already a good one. Oh! That's not very nice, is it? Wouldn't that be much nicer to make it that low tra warning, low transmitter? Let's do that, see if we can. Uh, it was in low, if I remember rightly. Back. What's that one? Warning, low temperature B. Ooh, warning, low temperature. That's not what we're after. Low TX WAV. How about that? Warning. Transmitter low battery. That's much better. Yeah. 
Okay, doke. Um, and here are the other warnings for your low signals, weak signals, low signal quality. Warning, weak signal. Yeah. Signal lost. You know this if you switch your receiver off. Signal lost. Receiver reboot. There's no message on that. A little message comes up on the screen. Range test. I think that's beep, 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 beep. Yep. You could create a voice file, put that in there if you want. Ah, here's one that I made um, because auto trim, when you switch it on, just beeps at you, um, which is not necessarily warning what it was, especially if you've forgotten that was the auto trim switch and you accidentally knock it and you think, what's that beeping noise? So what I did was alloc create a voice file and allocate that to it so that it says this to me. Auto trim. And it, will ju it just keeps on saying it as long as it's switched on. Okay. Right. Let's look at making your own files. We'll come out of there for a second. And I will switch it off for a moment. Okay, what you want to do is go to a website where you can do text-to-speech. Now, I would suggest this one, rcthoughts.com, rc-thoughts.com, solutions for jetty problems you didn't know you had. Go to the TTS, text-to-speech service, and here you are. He's very kindly put in a text-to-speech thing for you. Um, so we'll create a, a little file called Hello YouTube. Uh, the language, well, I'm British, so I will have English, Great Britain. You can see that there's plenty of languages to choose from. Leave it as that, normalization, yes. Adjust the speed. If you find they're speaking a bit quickly, you can slow it down here. And certainly for the DS16, DC16, it'll be a WAV type of file. Um, oh. What was that doing? It's me, me using the up-down buttons rather than scrolling around with the mice, mouse. And process the text and get the file. So go. Hello, YouTube. There you are. Play it again. Hello, YouTube. Lovely. Download the file, right click and save as. So we'll say right click, save link as. Uh, up comes the box. Hello, YouTube. I'll put it in my downloads folder. Yes. Save. Okay, now we go to our file manager, go to the folder where we saved it, downloads, and there it is. Lovely. For the moment, I'll just plug the transmitter in now. So we've got our USB cable, which plugs in to the back of the tranny, or the top, I should say. Transmitter. And it comes up with this start transmitter. Say yes. Connect USB. Yes. Thank you. Now, back to the PC. And, there you see, it sees the SD card inside your transmitter as just another drive that it's connected to. In this case, it's USB drive E. So what we're going to do is we'll take our file here, right click, Copy, go to the USB drive, right, this is the card inside your transmitter, and the one we're going to go to is the audio, not the language, not the voice, audio. Open that one, it will have some of the transmitter system sounds in it, and there will then be a whole bunch of folders with all the different languages. I got rid of all the ones except English, because I only speak English. Uh, I don't think it makes any difference to the operation of your transmitter. I just do it because I like a little bit of neatness. Those who've seen me wiring my models will laugh at that, because it tends to be a rat's nest, but there we go. Anyway, I'll do a Control v pasted that in. And there it is. Hello, YouTube.
it's on the transmitter. Come back to the transmitter. We settled in. I'll pull out the uh, USB cord. Transmitter will ask me, and it's switched on. There we go. So I can go into menu. Come on, little camera, focus. Please focus. Gets annoying when it does this. Is it there? Nearly. Yep. And back into advanced properties. Sounds on event. And I will add. I'll choose this switch just for the moment. Say OK. Switch it back to the off position. Come along here and get to the bottom. Oh, no, it wasn't YouTube, was it? It was Hello YouTube. Silly me. Sorry, you just have to uh, put up with my middle age moment. Uh, is it? Okay, it's going to be somewhere up here. I'm struggling to see this screen due to it. There it is. Hello, YouTube.wav. So we can put that on. Turn up the volume. And if I move that switch. Hello, YouTube. There you go. So now you know how to assign sounds around the system, uh, how to get make your own sound files. And as I say, if you want, just Google. I just Googled for, you know, the Top Gun Tower fly by WAV and found those little Top Gun things I was able to put on. So, um, see, so have fun with it, but bear in mind you'll soon get bored of it, and so will others if you overdo it. Bye for now.